A hard act to follow? <laughs> yeah. I'm Mary Favier. I'm a general practitioner. I represent Doctors for Choice. <laughs> We're an organization yeah. formed in okay. 2002 <laughs> because a group of us got together saying, we don't agree with the voice that was being expressed at the medical establishment at the time. We said, that isn't the voice of a very significant number of doctors we know. We said, that's a usually male voice, it's a conservative voice, and it's a religious influenced voice. And we said, it has to change. And to this day, it still has to change. And we're here saying that doctors, as Irish doctors, we are willing to change. <laughs> Abortion is a health care procedure. procedure an Irish woman will have. It is more common for an Irish woman to have an abortion than have a tonsillectomy or an appendectomy put together. So it's common. <laughs> Not that you know that until very recently in terms of talking about it, but anyway. Okay, it's also important for you to know that it is safe. The vast majority of abortions take place in early pregnancy, and no matter at what stage of pregnancy you have an abortion, it is safer to have one than to complete a pregnancy to term. That may not be what you hear, but it's, it's actually the correct facts. That doesn't mean there are no complications, but they are rare. And for your information, they do not include infertility, pelvic inflammatory disease, or breast cancer. Again, not something you're always told. As, as Doctors for Choice, we always want to support an evidence-based uh, reproductive health care. We would always argue that it is a woman's right to choose, and that is the basic premise of our organization. We advocate for a safe and legal abortion service. To do that, the Eighth Amendment has to be repealed. But most importantly, no new legislation should be introduced. <laughs> we argue, for instance, I'll, uh, in the situation in Canada, is that they have no legislation around the issue of abortion, and it works for them there. Abortion is a healthcare procedure, and indeed it should be regulated, but not legislated for. There's no reason why hysterectomy would appear in our legislation and abortion should be no different. We, we argue that the only person who should decide if and when an abortion should take place should be the woman herself. There, there is no other medical procedure where an uh, an adult, other than the person themselves, needs to consent. An abortion should be no different. Only a woman can decide for herself. We, we'd also argue there should be no medical restrictions on access to abortion. So for instance, there is no medical basis for time limits. Whether it's 12 weeks versus 14, whether it's 20 weeks versus 40, Pregnancy is a continuum. There is no medical evidence to say that we should put limits on any position of termination and abortion in pregnancy. The only deciding factor should be the woman's choice if that is what she decides. <laughs> Another piece of information is that late abortions are rare and they're rare particularly in circumstances where safe abortion exists and where access is easy. We, as we particularly know in Ireland, where access is denied, more late abortions occur, evidenced by the fact that more Irish women have late abortions than their English counterparts. Again, because we know women face significant barriers in this country to access to abortion. After 
after we repeal the Eighth, Eighth Amendment, and we will repeal the Eighth Amendment, there will be conversations and we will need to discuss, well, who should have an abortion? Will, how will we structure it? And as an organization, we would ask you and us as individuals and as groups that the better way to frame that is to turn it around and ask yourselves, well, who will you be okay with to deny an abortion to? Who will you say, well, I'm actually happy that you won't be allowed or this woman won't be allowed? Because well, you know, if we are to say, well, in actual fact, I don't think you have a convincing enough story, it's not sad enough, tragic enough, are we going to be able to say, yes, I think that it's okay to deny you an abortion? Because that's in actual fact what we all need to answer when we are addressing this question. Because you need to be aware, and we are well aware, that if we legislate to restrict access to Irish abortion, uh, to abortion in Ireland, Irish women in, will travel. Because we will be effectively saying to them, well, for you in that group, you're going to have to do it the old way. You're going to have to travel. Because you bet they will. And that is an unacceptable proposition, particularly to us in Doctors for Choice. We think it should be unacceptable in an Irish scenario. And we say, let's stop exporting our abortion problem now. <laughs> Finally, the, the silence and stigma around abortion is being slowly but surely dismantled. And that is fantastic. But just as much as politicians need to hear our voices loud and clear, so too does the medical establishment. And this is where you can help. So what we would ask you to do as individuals and as organizations, to every time you meet a doctor or a doctor's groups or anything in the health environment, we're asking you to challenge those doctors to tell you what is their position on this issue. Call them out on it. Um, put them on the spot, challenge them, but also educate them and most particularly support them. We will have safe and legal abortion in Ireland and you here today are the people who are making it happen. Thank you. Dr. Mary Fabian. Just three more.